Night with JL Media is back at Hamilton 16 IMAX. Hamilton Town Center, good, rich, quality theaters. Miss Mandy. Hey, hey, in the house. We are back doing it live. So excited. I love it here. We were off too long. We had a uh, movie, Suicide Squad, the yes. beginning of last month, and we're back here toward the end of this month. It seems like a full two months off. But I feel like we get, you know, it's like double duty, though, because we get to come back next week for Deepwater Horizon. So I'm, I'm looking forward to all of it. pretty excited about it. Pumped up. We've got a full panel here this evening I'm very excited about. Would you like to give some introductions, Miss Mandy? I would love to give some introductions. So we have the executive director of Habitat for Humanity of Hamilton County. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Jason is here with us. Hey, Jason. Yes, hello, hello, Johnny, Mandy. Thanks for having me. They're doing some good things here in Hamilton County. Uh, yes, sir. How yes, long sir. have you been with Habitat for Humanity? I've served with Habitat for Humanity for seven years now. You've served? Served with Habitat, yes. Okay, you make it sound like it's court-ordered. No. <laughs> Non-profit. Non-profit, no. you serve. You a service. I absolutely love it. I've uh, four years with the Muncie affiliate and three right here in Hamilton County. In Hamilton County. You guys got a lot going on right now? this time of the year we do this is a busy time for us uh, we start getting our plan for next year we have a huge development uh, had 146th in Hazeldell uh, oh. Noblesville four acres of land that we're gonna be building a community on and of course uh, oh. we just re we just opened a, a new restore uh, right there at 96th and 69 in Cro Cross Point Business Park. I completely spaced it. I've been very busy this week and I'm supposed sure. to give you a message okay I work with uh, I do a lot of work with Herb Wilson out of Carmel. Okay. And uh, Herb owns Carmel uh, Marble Care. And oh, Marble perfect. Care and uh -huh. I are going to be getting together and bringing you some uh, cultured marble sink tops. Excellent. Here before Excellent. the year's out, probably. Very good. Yes. Well, thank you. I completely spaced that. I was going to talk about it when I first uh, met you, and and I've been busy. Mandy's getting married in a couple of weeks, and she's making me do a lot of work, and I'm not used to doing it. <laughs> That's just what's going She's on. She's getting married and you're busy? That's exactly the problem. Yeah, I know. That's, That's how it problem. happens. You know, we're, we're Johnny and I are a package deal, so. Absolutely. You know. Get used to it, people. It is. <laughs> so technically, both of you guys are getting married. Then. Is that it? Is no. That we're that we're both marrying Darren. You're both marrying Darren. <laughs> Darren's a good guy, but I've never even been to their house, so I can't say I love him as much <laughs> as I love Mandy. But he is a good guy. He loves her, so I got to love him. The voices you just heard are reoccurring guests and real good friends of mine to my right. Mr. David Banks. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, brother. Hey. Now, you are, people know that you co-host a show with me called Indie Drinking Dead, a Walking Dead fan cast. Yes. But you have a new show. Yes, I do. Uh, along with um, lovely co-host Angie Breyer, we are Headline News. That's Headline N-U-Z. You can catch us on Facebook or our website, headlinenews.com. Uh, we are a current events type show. We talk about everything that's going on in the world of the world. Uh, the world, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically everything. Um, give our opinions. Uh, we answer questions. We, we we just do it all on that show. So we do it all. Yeah. And to your right, Mr. Brandon Peters. Hey, -o. how are you, sir? Not too bad. I'm just enjoying my continued pledgeship to become a Lyle's child. <laughs> <laughs> Working on it. Mm -hmm. Among many other things, Brandon is one of the co-hosts of Cult Cinema Cavalcade. Indeed. And tell us about Cult before we get started, brother. Well, Cult Cinema Cavalcade, if you've never tuned into this show and heard, but it's a, it's a bi-weekly podcast that I do with uh, Cullen Bricker, and who you've probably heard. Sea Dog. Yes. Oh, yeah. On the Jail Mia Today Productions. And we basically take a movie considered, but not limited, being a cult classic. We... Um, you know, silly movies, B movies, like stuff we might find underrated. Um, As I do, stuff that may be forgotten, <laughs> and uh, we you know sit and discuss them. We we have guests on a lot of the times, and uh, yeah, we just go through it. We have some good laughs, some good uh, analysis, and then at the end we'll like rate the movie. Okay, on now, our little scale. Now, uh, again, I'm going to ask you where everybody can hear Brandon. Okay. We can request movies, right? Because I've started putting stuff on your Facebook page. Uh -huh. Kind of a dare, really, to see what will happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, we, we have a schedule. Um, <laughs> of things. You'll take it I like how he's avoiding your conversation. <laughs> <laughs> we, no, we, I mean, a lot, we love taking suggestions, and we've hit a couple of them. But we do, we do have, like, a schedule. And sometimes a uh, movie is attached to a guest, so we can't really uh, flip it around. But we do try to... Um, 
hit hit those and sometimes sometimes you might recommend a movie that's on our list we're just not ready for it yet ah okay so and uh yeah, need, for our, be, for I, a one year anniversary though we did put it out to our audience to uh request what movie we do for our, our one year celebration show so and we got a lot of response from that so we had a pick from plenty okay all right hamilton 69 max we are here tonight because there is a number david there is a number for justice that's what it says on the poster behind you brother the magnificent seven is what we're doing tonight denzel doing his thing this i I believe this is that's not why i went to you first because that's not it Oh really? I I, I thought <laughs> the, I was on par with Denzel. The black gentleman on the in the, on the panel. I, mean, I went to first. Why not? I I can be compared to Denzel. That's fine. <laughs> I don't mind. But, well, I, I mean, I was about to say. I think this is I think this is Denzel's first western, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah. is it. This, he's not. He's not dabbled. No, he's playing a cowboy for the first time of his illustrious career. Yes. Now Denzel has done some amazing movies. Amazing. Now, he is one of those guys you can put in different situations. He pretty much has the same character. He can just alter it a little bit. He's, he, can, he can get deeper, though. He's kind of got, he's kinda got that, like, uh, compared to, like, John Cusack, where yeah. you get John Cusack, you, you, you get what John Cusack brings. But I think Denzel can go deeper and, and differentiate from that. Like, uh, something like He Got Game, very yeah. different oh, yeah. role for him. Yeah. Um, he, can, he can dig deep. Even like uh, Mighty Quinn, one of his first movies, uh, set him off. Very, John, very different role for him. John Q was deep. John Q was deep. Uh, even, um, oh my, the dude when he was a cop, man. Training Day. Thank you. That's yeah. what I, I'm having mind I think, blanks here. I think I can go as far as saying Denzel is one of the best actors of our any generation, Gener- yeah. He's, I mean, he's like one of the last like movie stars that could just open a movie because he's in it. You don't really, exactly. you have to like nowadays. We all love Robert Downey Jr., but people only go see him if he's Iron Man. Exactly, they're yeah, they're yeah. tied to properties, and he's one of the last few that just is. And <coughs> it's been his own career path. Like if you look at Denzel's movies, one here's a fun fact: he's never done a sequel. If the Equalizer two does get actually happen, then that's off. But he's right. not done a sequel ever. And two, like look at the co-stars in his movies; they're never usually he's the man. Mm-hmm. You always, it's always weird, like when you see him with like uh, two guns with like Mark Wahlberg. That's a big deal because there's never usually right. that big a star in a movie with Denzel. With him here, he's got Chris Pratt, who's on the rise. He's a yeah, he's huge he, star already. He's Hollywood's he's, it guy right now. Yeah, <clears throat> but I mean, usually he's got like I mean, even like a Ryan Reynolds. But I mean, Ryan Reynolds didn't do anything for the box office till Deadpool, and people aren't going to want to see him with Deadpool. But he. Yeah, yeah. Like every, Russell Crowe. Like everybody he, forgot about National Lampoon's. Uh, right. Yeah, <laughs> the movie. Ryan but, I mean, they was, tried yeah. for like a decade to get Ryan Reynolds something. And, I mean, one of his biggest movies is that safe house with Denzel. Right, right. Because you, Denzel opens that movie. You mean to tell me that uh, Green Lantern <coughs> didn't make a whole lot of money? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> didn't make the money they wanted or spent. Jason, are you a Denzel fan? Of course. Who isn't? What is your favorite Denzel movie? I, I know we, can, I, we probably already named it. Oh, no. Um... So many. I know. I was going to say American Gangsters one. Oh, I see, yes. I didn't even think of that. Uh, yes. Book of Eli, I like. Book of Eli was a cool movie, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Wow. So uh, you, I, I recently did a, a commentary for Fallen. Do you remember that one, Johnny? I actually oh, do. A Rolling Stone song? Oh, I yes. like that movie quite a bit. Uh, Good, John, John Goodman, Goodman? Yeah. yeah. That was a great movie. Wow. Uh, Gandolfini was in that. We were talking about mm-hmm. Gandolfini before yeah. the show here. Him and uh, the, the woman who played his sister on Sopranos. I was like, it's their little, little cover story before they went to the mob. Working in. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot she was in that too. I can't think of her no. name. Yeah, can't remember. But Magnificent Seven is what we're seeing here tonight. Good, rich, quality theaters. Hamilton Town Center. Hamilton 16 IMAX. What do we know about this movie? It's a, it's a um, another remake. Remake. Right? Yeah. It, I mean, it's it's taking a, it's the same concept of you know this little town's getting bullied by an outside gangsters force and they they hire some outside guns to come in and clear them out um it goes back to uh seven samurai that was yeah. a kira kurosawa's film which was remade like six years later into the magnificent seven with yul brenner and it was a launching point for steve mcqueen too and a bunch of guys uh like james coburn uh charles bronson oh, yes. it was i mean it wasn't at the time that the original one actually didn't do well at the box office it right. was a failure and and it wasn't too. It was kind of mixed on reviews, but like it's through weird the years, they had a lot of heavy hitters in that yeah, movie. Yeah, I think know. it's because it was a launching point for so many actors that 
it got reanalyzed and people went back and the score was like an Academy Award now it got nominated for best score and that tune you can hear everywhere and then it ended up spawning it, it was big in Europe so it spawned three sequels and a television series mm -hmm. and now here we are bringing the property again which it's interesting like I feel like you could have done another Seven Samurai take on that story but you could have done it with like you know Chicago mobs yeah, story from yeah. back in the day like Seven Tommy Guns or something like yeah. that and, <laughs> you know just change the setting use the same story I mean you could do I mean, there's all different kinds of, of things. You could do, like, an African village that's getting bullied. You could, you know, go like that. You, uh, there's just different places. You didn't have to go Western again, but... It's a universal story. With with the uh, the thing I like about this one is, like, they're doing the Western, but they got, like, a really diverse cast in it, which may, it's going to bring a lot to the table, bring more interest from, like, outside audiences and stuff, and it's just maybe more a little bit more uh, real take to it, a little bit more tighter modern sensibilities, possibly. Now, is this movie a remake of the 60s? Magnificent Seven or The Samurai because it changed a little bit. He said, um, Fuqua said that it was, um, he went back to Seven Samurai quite a bit for it. I don't know whether you know it's true or not and he's trying to save face with film geeks going, because um, there was a lot of people <laughs> upset going uh, that it was getting remade and it's like, well, the, the one you're mad about getting remade is a, a remake. So, yeah. um, Who could be mad about that? I don't know. You know, you're not, you don't need to be against remakes, you just need to be against bad movies because as we've seen, you know, there's, I mean, that's the hot thing to do, take a known property and just do it again, make a sequel to it, something like that, because people like name brands now. That's what, that's what happens with cinema, and that's what the box office stuff is. But, you know, there are good remakes. John Carpenter's The Thing. Uh, mm -hmm. David Cronenberg's The Fly. Like, there's, a, there's great ones. There's a lot of bad ones, but there's also a lot of bad original movies as well. So, <laughs> Without a doubt. We've had a couple of them this year. Oh, yeah. Luckily, nothing that we have covered. I don't know about that. Didn't you cover uh, Independence Day? <laughs> I, I, oh. Independence Day was much better than uh, Batman versus Superman. Oh, come I, I, on. No, uh, disagree. Johnny, I will go Johnny. on the record with that right no, now. Jason? No, 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 man. Lost, you lost some points on that one. Johnny. Help me out, Jason. I, uh, See? I, told you. <laughs> told you. The Wonder I, Woman did not work. No one can give me to no. Wait, the no Wonder one, Woman didn't work? Wonder Wonder of all the work. things in that movie that you didn't like, it was Wonder <laughs> See, Woman. No, no, that was just the one I started with. <laughs> you can't talk about this movie with that guy, man. <laughs> did you Did you see the, the, uh, the R-rated cut? Uh, you know what? I did not. I know because you didn't like. I, it doesn't fix everything, but it's a lot better movie. They give it Superman is. a lot more to do. It is. It is. Um, it is it's actually movie. a Batman versus Superman movie rather than then Batman, a Batman movie with Superman here and there. You see, that sounds much better anyway. It's it's still got some some stuff that it, you know it's still there. It's not fixable, but it was a, it's a better movie. Well, you, you're not just going to harp on me all night long. It's not going to happen, Brandon. So I'll stop that. I'm going to bring in the GM. All right, <laughs> Hamilton 69 Max, Mr. Mitch Ross. We're now at six, Johnny. We need one more guest. <laughs> we'll be at seven. Wait a minute. We'll Am seven. I allowed to say your last name? Did that warrant get taken care of? We okay? <laughs> what? <laughs> this is M. Ro I mean Mitch R. <laughs> How are you, sir? From Alabama. <laughs> Magnificent Seven tonight. You excited? I am. I love Westerns. They don't make okay. enough Westerns. It's kind of a dying genre, but I love it. Well, that's what we've talked about before on this show, that basically the superhero movies are the Westerns of our age. But now yeah. we've got a new Western in our age. That's right. That's right. And it's got an amazing cast, so I'm super excited about it. I haven't had a chance to see it yet. I'm looking forward to doing that this week. Well, Mitch, you're a young guy, so you probably don't remember the ori or the remake, the 1960s Magnificent Seven. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, you watched it later, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. What did you think of it? I loved it. I loved it. I think it's a great movie. I mean, I'm a, I know we talked about this a little bit earlier, Johnny, but, uh, you know, the, whole, the movie's based on Seven Samurai. Certainly. Which is one of my favorite movies, so... I, I just I love that that movie just keeps staying alive with each iteration and and uh, I don't miss any movies that Denzel is in. Well, the '60s version uh, launched a couple of careers. The uh, the new version now, 2016. Uh, there's some heavy hitters, up, up and coming heavy hitters that are in this thing. Yeah, absolutely. What, a, what about Samurai? Were those big actors in that one? I've never seen it. Well, I mean, it's it was a Japanese film released in in the 1950s. But you're a film guy, so I figured you wouldn't at least know the history of it. I don't and, know. And I look I, up to you this way. I'm so. embarrassed and admit I don't know much about. Um, <laughs> that was before uh, Jap his time. Japanese no. cinema from the <laughs> 50s and 60s. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a cool movie. It's a cool story. Um, right. I I actually don't know if this is based on a like loosely based on a true story. Um, 
in Japan. Right. So that would be cool to find out. But Well, we don't do any spoilers here. We definitely do the teasers, but you have not seen this movie yet. I have not. I have not seen this version. That's, so. that's uh, an oddity here. Normally you're ahead of us. Yeah, I try and get in and, and see the see the ones I want to see, and this was definitely on the list. Um, just been a busy, busy no, uh, it's couple busy, of months. Busy for all of us. You didn't get a chance to meet Jason here on the end, did you? Hi, Jason. Hello. Jason, nice to meet you. Jason is the man with uh, Habitat for Humanity in Hamilton County. Oh, that's amazing. What is your official that's a great title over there where you serve? Officially the executive director. Yes. That, that just sounds cool, doesn't it? Yes. Should we all genuflect when you walk into the room? <laughs> <laughs> I feel just radiating but, greatness over here. Yes, sir. Right. But, it's, you know, he's a Hamilton County business, so I'm sure you've seen him around. Just didn't know who he was until right now. What is going on here at Hamilton 16 IMAX? It's been almost two months since we've been here. Yeah, we've missed you. We've missed you a bunch. Um, let's see. We're still doing our uh, flashback cinema, which is going really well. We've got our um, free kids shows. Um, they're going to be going throughout the fall. Uh, flashback cinema is really cool. October is going to see some neat movies like, uh, you know, the original Psycho. We're going to oh, be showing yeah. the original Halloween. Um, it kicks off with uh, Batman, I believe. Um, this week we're showing North by Northwest, which, oh. Oh, you know, yeah. great thriller. Um, and so uh, I'm, I'm still super enthused about that. Um, this weekend we've got a free kids show on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 10 a.m. Um, and we have a bunch of extra content um, that we're showing. We're, we're doing a Michael Buble concert um, this week. Um, and we have a bunch of events. If you go to uh, GoodrichQualityTheaters.com and look up the, uh, the special events column, you, you'll see all the different kind of uh, shows and, right. and performances we're going to have. Well, I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit I'm a Buble fan. Yeah, Banks is looking at me, but I don't, I don't care who knows it. I, I enjoy a good crooner. Absolutely. Don't <laughs> say that unless you're going to be at the show. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen Buble in concert. I'm not sure if I'll make it to the theater to see, but I'm definitely going to do the Psycho and the Halloween, without a doubt. North by Northwest is up in the air. Depends on what, what's going on that day, but I'm definitely going to do it. What about with the concessions here? You, know, you see what we're doing. Mandy's got her double cheese popcorn over here. Yeah, we had a, we had a little bit of a shortage of caramel corn for a little while there. Really? I was, I was working out of town and I forgot to order the caramel stuff before I left. Oh. <laughs> you, so I'd like everybody to know we do have caramel again. You, My bad. You're becoming a road warrior. You've done a lot of traveling here lately with the job. Yeah, a little bit, and I'll probably be doing some here in uh, November or December. We're going to be opening our new location in uh, Tampa. We're really excited about it. It's called the Riverview 14. It's going to be a beautiful palace. Um, wow. So. I don't know what your reach is, but we're coming, Tampa. <laughs> Look out. Mitch is on his way. We're going to descend on you like very friendly popcorn-laden locusts. <laughs> so what have you heard about Magnificent Seven? We know, we know it's going to be worth watching. I hear it's really good. Um, I hear that uh, you know Chris Pratt is a, is a show stealer, but that uh, you know Denzel is uh, awesome as always and brings something kind of new to the table. You know, each each film, this this character seems like uh, the, the 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 main character or the leader of the Magnificent Seven. Right. Um, has a little bit of a, a different vibe, you know. And Seven Samurai is just kind of a wise, caring, you know, older warrior. Uh, and this one, um, Denzel seems to have a little bit of swagger to him, which I like. I think that's cool. That's just a natural swagger. That's just a natural swagger. Isn't it? He's amazing. He's I will watch any Denzel Washington movie, no problem, yeah, any that, day. That's kind of what's happened to Denzel in recent years. He's you, become Denzel, much the, like Cher or Madonna. You, you know who we're talking about when you say Denzel. <laughs> Denzel would make, I, you know, it's too late now, but he would make an awesome Batman. I really think Denzel would make a good Batman. Yeah, I wish we lived in a, I wish we lived in a time where they were that brave. I think that yeah, would be amazing. He would, I mean, I think he's got it. Like, he'd been... Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take up for Affleck at all. So, oh, Affleck's fine. He was. He was good. He in was one of the better he, parts he, of the movie. He was, Thank you. he was good in it. I, I, it was one of the most like accurately written Batman. Like he was a detective. I yeah. I, I did. <laughs> like, I did stand corrected. You know, Affleck was a decent Batman. I didn't enjoy the movie, but I enjoy it was the better movie. than Christian Bale. I thought. Absolutely, I agree with you on that. 
Well, what? <laughs> Where's the trigger? Where's the trigger? <laughs> Swear to me. <laughs> He's got that little bit of like the nose piece was giving him a little bit of a <laughs> nasal thing. He's like, wow, <laughs> bad <laughs> <laughs> McGruff the crime bat. That's right. <laughs> Mitch, you've got a lot going on at, I guess, a home studio, too. Can we talk about that for a minute? Uh, sure. Yeah, sure. I've, I've seen your Facebook Live videos in the mornings. and. Uh, yeah, I'm dabbling. I'm actually uh, I'm, I'm working with, uh, you know, a, a guy um, named John Taylor, who's uh, who I work with here and uh, who has directed some films and, and shot some films locally, and he's written some screenplays and stuff. He and I are collaborating on a screenplay right now. Very um, nice. I'm super excited about that. That's a lot of fun. Also, um, also with music. You're a musician as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm an I'm a amateur songwriter. <laughs> um, well, you, you, know. you know, that's my thing, interviewing musicians now. Well, yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, I'm not, I, you know... It's something I like to do. I, I get a song that comes to my head, and I, I like to sit down and write it. I've been um, working on learning how to actually use the professional tools in, a, in the sure. little studio that I'm building and still kind of putting all the pieces together for that. But I, I really enjoy music in general, and um, I like you know doing things in different genres. And you know I've got a couple of different projects I'm working on with that that I'm kind of jazzed about. Um, time seems to be at a premium these days. Absolutely, so, for all of us. You know, those. I'll get to it when I get to it. It's kind of a hobby thing, you know. Okay, well, if you ever do any Buble covers, let me know. So I look right at David when I oh say this. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> we got to get the slow ladies dancing, man. Exactly. Buble has a place in this world. I concur, brother. Thank you. I'll leave y'all to it. He's not. He's not going <laughs> to back me on the Batman versus Superman, but no, he'll back me on this. No. That was a pretty decent movie. Man. I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to. Habitat for Humanitarian. Gosh, I, you know, I've, I've practiced it 15 <laughs> times. I'm over here eating cheese popcorn. Habitat for Humanity of Hamilton County. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, what sir. all we got going on over there? You got the two big projects? Any big plans for April or I guess the first April. quarter of next year? For first quarter. Yeah, yeah like after said, the uh, freeze is gone. Yeah, we for uh, it's kind of a first for our affiliate uh, is we will be building a community uh, in Noblesville, four acres of land we were able to acquire, and we're going to serve uh, about 15 to 17 families with housing wow. um, on that land. And um, we've uh, worked with a local architect, Studio M and Carmel, who's come up with some very interesting house designs that kind of uh, push the envelope a little bit. They don't look like your typical habitat house that right. people would maybe associate uh, with habitat. And um, very green building, which is kind of it's the big buzz now in the housing industry, but very green, very energy efficient homes. <coughs> uh, keeps them affordable for our families, uh, not just at the beginning when they take out their mortgage, but uh, 20 years later, they'll still be energy efficient, very affordable for them. What does it take to qualify to be served by you guys? Well, that's a good question. So we, um, a lot of the misconceptions is that we just give houses away. That's what I thought, to be honest with you. I'll be very yeah. honest with you, I did. And most people think that, and that's um, actually not true. We, we serve the 30 to 60% of the area median income. So uh, folks that are less than 30% of the area median income, uh, there's a lot of government housing subsidies available. Uh, if you're above 60%, um, you're usually fortunate enough to get traditional lending. The 30 to 60 are the folks that are out there working, uh, paying market rate rents, and can never just quite, you know, get ahead. So, that sounds like me. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> so we take those 30 to 60 percent. Um, they apply with us. Uh, we do background check, credit check. Um, we have a, a special committee that meets with the families, lets them know, you know, all that's involved, and uh -huh. they. Uh, after they, they're approved, they do 250 hours of sweat equity. That could be working uh, to build their house, to be building other uh, homes. Uh, it could be working in our restore. There's a number of ways. Uh, so it's more than just a loan. It's more than just a loan. It's, it's really a commitment on their part. All right. But, um, okay, a background check. Yes. What does this entail? I mean, do you not, I guess, 
Yeah, what's some background check entail? I don't want to even go there. I'm going to let you go there. <laughs> Wait, well, that's – we uh, – well, I mean, you know, I, I could pass a background check. I'm not saying that, but <laughs> – I was about to say, Johnny. <laughs> of you know, all the things that – yeah. David yeah. Keyes, look, well, that, uh, that was another thing that surprised me, you doing a background check. You know. We do. We – you know, we make sure that uh, uh, we, we have really quality families who are really just looking for a hand up and not a hand out. Right. Uh, these are folks that work really hard and just looking for, uh, you know, to better their situation. It's a lot of first-time home buyers, um, that kind of thing. So it's it's uh, really a great program. But they do their 250 hours of sweat equity. They do sweat equity. I like that. They do 50 hours of homeowner education. So we teach them how to maintain a home. We teach them uh, like a Dave Ramsey financial uh-huh. classes, uh, how to budget their money. Wow. Um, a number of things. So they're very prepared when they go into home ownership. Uh, and then at that point, um, uh, after we build the home, we hand the keys over and they pay, they pay a mortgage. Uh, mortgage laws have changed. I can't say interest free, but uh, we have never charged interest for one of our loans in Hamilton County. Wow. Um, and they just pay back. Uh, so our families have been paying back the principal on those notes over a 20 year period. So, Jeez. Uh, for example, average two bedroom, one bath rents for twelve hundred dollars in Hamilton County. Our uh, typical mortgage payment for our families is between four hundred and four hundred fifty dollars a wow. month. Whoa, that is amazing. Right. Wow. How many families do you serve a year? Well, it varies. Uh, we've been very fortunate. We've served about 80 families here in Hamilton County over our history. Uh, and like I said, we, we've kind of set an ambitious uh, plan over our next three or four years to, to serve another 15 to 17. Wow. So 17 in the community that uh, you're building? Correct. In Nobles. Correct. Correct. All right. Did you know all this about Habitat for Humanity? Yeah, I mean, Hamilton I, County, bro. I had a couple of questions. Um, sure. You were talking about some of the green housing. I remember seeing something um, when they were doing uh, housing in New Orleans. Yes. Um, and they had introduced some of these uh, green designs, and they, the houses themselves looked really, really neat with some modular, multi-function, um, right. you know, kind of that European approach or whatever, if right. if, if you will. Um, is that is that what you're doing here? Uh, well, the, the, the kind of direction I guess we're going um, with our community is, uh, well, it's definitely kind of pushing the envelope of, like I said, of what habitat design typically is. I think it's kind of evolved. Habitat's been around uh, now in the United States for 40 years. Uh, this year we're celebrating our 40th anniversary, and it started as uh, one guy founded it in uh, just outside of Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, had a pretty good thing, he thought, and was kind of Johnny Appleseed, went across the United States talking to other people and telling them about what they were doing in Atlanta. And uh, we now have... Uh, there's over 60 Habitat affiliates just in the state of Indiana. Jesus. Um, and so I think over this 40 years, we've had kind of different uh, housing models and designs. Uh, this one, we're kind of taking a, a different approach. And, and um, like I said, it's not just building a community and just a row, group of houses. It's uh, Or, yeah, just not building a neighborhood and a group of houses. We're really building a community. So looking at how the houses kind of relate to each other and, uh, taking a lot of maybe cues from maybe craftsman styling and stuff. That's really neat. Now, at some point, Habitat for Humanity did give houses, right? I'm not crazy here. No, did, did, we've never. You've never given houses? No, sir. Okay, because I see the people that, like, Basically, form walls in the parking lot, and you take it out here, and you put, build a house, and yeah, you and put families in them, but you put them in for a much smaller fee, and uh, there's correct. a lot involved with it. Correct. It, typically, the, so the way the model works is we fundraise uh, for the home ahead of time. So we have um, a lot of amazing partners here in Hamilton County, um, a lot of our faith community and businesses and individuals who will donate to a particular project. Uh, once we raise the funds uh, to, you know, for the home, uh, let's, let's say an average home is about $80,000. We raise those funds ahead of time. We build the home. Um, and then uh, they pay the mortgage on the 80000 the principal of the 80000 Right. And so really, in theory, uh, if you were to donate uh, $1,000 to Habitat for a particular build, uh, and as that family you know, makes their mortgage payment, um, that $1,000 always stays within Habitat. It's continually recycled and, and serving more families. Jeez. I did not know all this, brother. Yeah. It's a learning great. experience well, here, man. Well, I'm great. digging this. Well, like I said, you're not the only one, so I appreciate you giving me the time to kind of Oh, brother, we appreciate that you with being others, here. Yeah. We absolutely appreciate you being here. Any secrets, Mitch, about the Magnificent Seven? Because you work in the industry, right? 
letting mm. them pass. You work in the industry here, and I know that uh, most of the people that do work in the industry have seen the movie. They aren't as busy as you are anyway. Yeah, I, like I said, man, I, I just ha- I haven't had a chance to see it, so I don't know any secrets. And, and besides, but nobody I told you anything is what I'm getting at? No, no. I mean, you know. Steve saw it, didn't he? Probably. See, there he goes. He's single. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's got time. He and his girl he and his girl catch movies all the time. So, you know. Um Yeah, but I, I don't know. And you know, I know that in the in the previous iteration of the movie, you know, not everybody makes it out. But I don't know in this version or if if they do that or not. So but it's, it's not a superhero movie, it's a western, so you know someone's got to bite the bullet. See what I did there? Oh yeah. <laughs> David, ju- you're David's just going to make faces at me. He's not going to talk to me. You're getting better, Johnny. There is a big cast in this thing. Brendan, have you seen the cast here? Yes, I have. Who do you who are you surprised to see in it? Surprise? Um, I don't know um, that I didn't know before that today, know, or that you didn't know beforehand until you seen the trailer. Until I seen the trailer, um, I don't know. Like uh, Matthew Bomber's in it. Yes. Um, I know for me it was Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke, yeah. Well, they, they don't really play Ethan Hawke up too much, and he's they in this, and he's probably like a uh, third or fourth biggest name in it. Yeah, because he starred with Denzel and Antoine Fuqua and yeah, Training Day. Yeah, so. it's a nice little reunion there. Yeah. Um, Ethan Hawke does a little work like this. I kind of like what he's doing lately, doing little smaller smaller films. Now, what I was surprised, I was surprised to see Kingpin in it. Oh, with D'Onofrio, Yeah. Thank you, because I couldn't pronounce it. I can say Habitat for Humanity now. I just can't say <laughs> yeah. Uh <laughs> Byung-Hun Lee, uh, he was in this little movie called I Saw the Devil, which I, I recommend. Oh, um, yeah, that's a cool it's flick. flick. It's a South Korean flick. It's, uh, if, you, if you can watch some people take a beating, that's a, that's a good one. Oh, um, well, I've been married twice. I'm okay. I can well, he, <laughs> he, was in a, he was in a movie called The Good, the Bad, and the Weird, which is a take on The Good, Bad, and the Ugly. Over there, which uh, I haven't seen it, but I've heard good things about it. Okay. It's it's a lot of fun, yeah. dude. It's it's just like a riot of yeah. action and comedy, and it's really bizarre, but it's it's a lot of fun. Gotcha. Yeah, um, yeah. He's like he's an interesting touch on there. Um, but yeah, this movie originally, I mean, it had like Matt Damon attached to it at one point. Um, like bigger bigger names, uh, Tom Cruise. I think was the original when they got it greenlit. It was uh, Tom Cruise was supposed to star in it. Um, like Matt Damon was brought along. There's like a lot of a little list of names, and then you know what, what we have here. Um, still, still a good list of a good list of names. I mean, you have Denzel. There's, I mean, you know, a few bigger stars than Denzel, and then Chris Pratt's big. I mean, that's, ah, absolutely, that's good right enough to, to to get people in the theaters. Like right there, those two. Yeah, that's all you need to know. Denzel, Chris yeah. Pratt. You got um, who's the leading lady again? Haley, uh, gosh, her name's Haley something. Um, everybody go to their smartphones. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm synchronized phones, everybody. <laughs> ha- Haley uh, Bennett. Bennett, okay. Haley Bennett, yeah. He's quick. Um, yeah. Some of the movies we were naming a while ago, such as Training Day, mm-hmm. the director also directed those. Yeah, Fuqua, Antoine um, Fuqua. Yeah. Did we mention that on here? Ah, we were talking about it earlier. Training Day, The Equalizer, Uh, Olympias Has Fallen. King Arthur. um, He had uh, Bait with Jamie Foxx was one of his early films. That was pretty good. I remember that one. It was pretty fun. Yeah, it was like one of the first, like, Jamie Foxx. Oh, it was like a a little action thriller where people were like, okay, he's not booty call Jamie Foxx. Yeah, that was like right (laughs) after In Living Color, Jamie Mm -hmm. Foxx. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you remember in Living Color. Yeah, Living Absolutely Color was did. awesome. With Wanda? Absolutely yeah. do. Yeah, everybody remembers that. Uh, I can't see Mitch is a big In Living Color guy, though. Oh, I was a huge In Living Color fan. Really? Oh, man. Oh, man, that, that was Sunday nights, man. That was Yeah, that was that was Living a show. Color. That was, it was, that was, was it show. with The Simpsons back then, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They had yeah, a little like a great, Yeah, a little the night. The Simpsons and Living Color. I think Married with Children oh, was yeah, in that block, yeah. too. yeah. yeah. But we lost a lot of our young listeners now, everybody. <laughs> in living. <laughs> what are they what? talking about? What? The Sundays have changed now, brother. TV has changed, man. The, yeah, the whole man. entertainment world mm-hmm. has changed. Well, thanks to AMC, it's gotten a little better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know I'm going to mention The Walking Dead. Go ahead and mention since it. Since I've got that's, you sitting here. That's your cue. The Walking Dead on Sunday nights. We have to watch it. Did I tell you? I told you about The Walking Dead show that we have. Indie Drinking Dead. 
Oh, yeah. This year we're going to be at Broad Ripple Tavern. Nice. The biggest and best over there. We broadcast live every Sunday night over last week's episode of The Walking Dead. Kind of like Mystery Science Theater. You need Here, a drink if you're doing Fear the Walking Dead. So We tried that the first season, and uh, it, we didn't, just didn't get the numbers. It didn't stick. Have you watched the uh, second season? Uh, is it on the second half of it right now? It I watched the first right half, and then I was like, you know what? I had it's too many. Tail, it's on the tail Here's what happened. Now. My DVR gave me the sign. It was like I had, I had too many things recording at 9 o'clock. <laughs> I couldn't record it. I was like, this is it. This is my chance. You'll be okay. I'm taking it. <laughs> You'll be okay. I took that chance. It's not that bad. I mean, it's it's gotten need, better. You need to clear it before The Walking Dead starts, October 23rd. No, I'm, I'm, fine with, I'm fine with the regular Walking Dead. It was the fear of The Walking Dead. I just was having a hard time. October 23rd, Broad Ripple Tavern. We will be going live once again. Had to move across town because we kind of outgrew our last venue. We love them dearly. But needed more TVs. Needed more space. Needed more parking. I'm looking forward to it, Dave. I can't wait for it. I, I really can't. Everybody wants to know who, who's dead, who died, who, who, who caught the end of the bat. You know. Well, the last last episode is everybody that over cliffhanger, that cliffhanger, right? huh? Is everybody over that cliffhanger no, now? Like, no, no. I hope so, man. I hope so, man. I mean, I, I I know when it happened, everybody was pissed. <laughs> I mean, it was it it was it was almost a near riot. You yeah. know, in, in I, that I, I the, the technique, the camera work that they were using with that, I was like, oh no, they're not going to show us. I this see. This going to be. They're not going to show it. And then, exactly. Uh, see, I knew what was going to happen because I don't really care about spoilers. I really don't. So yeah. I, I read what they was going to do or the rumor that back then or what they was going to do. Mm-hmm. So I walked in. I remember that Sunday I walked in and I told Johnny, I said, don't be too happy about tonight. <laughs> you should don't get overly excited. He was like, why? I was like, I told him why. And he was just like. Uh, it was like all the life and joy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> very interesting, our viewing parties with Indie Drinking Dead. Indie Drinking Dead, of course, because we're in venues, we're in bars when we're doing it. It's like a World Series or a Super Bowl atmosphere. It really is. You know, there's a hugging really and cussing and high-fiving <laughs> and crying and everything going on. Usually, they, usually everybody's mad at me because I'm wishing Daryl would die. No, because you know what's going to happen, and you don't. <laughs> nobody wants you to tell them what's going to happen. I'm going to have to make it down. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it absolutely it is. is. Yeah. Jason, are you a Walking Dead fan? I, I think I'm in the minority here. I've only I've not seen but maybe a few episodes. No, that's quite all right. I, I mean, we understand yes. that people live lives. And <laughs> There's plenty of time for you to catch up. Absolutely. Right. That's, that's I, I still have young kids, so it's a lot of uh, Pixar, Disney stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Endless, endless stream yes. of, of yes. cartoons in my house. I've seen the Lego movie maybe 200 times. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was me with Beauty and the Beast and the Jungle Book when my daughter mm-hmm. was very young. Every single day. But not a Magnificent Seven. Hamilton 69 Max is where we're doing is good, rich, quality theaters. Beautiful Hamilton Town Center in Noblesville, Indiana, Hamilton County. Once again. The beautiful Hamilton County. The beautiful Hamilton County. The glorious Hamilton County. Magnificent Seven tonight with Mr. Denzel and Chris Pratt and everybody else. I'm looking forward to it. More than I was looking forward to Batman versus Superman. I've got to see this. Huh? See, does anybody? Here I got to give it a shot and try and move on. Is what I'm doing. I just want to pick the You can't, you can't the win with this guy. <laughs> what are your favorite westerns? Yeah, what's what's some of your favorite stuff? The spaghetti stuff. I grew up with Eastwood and spaghetti stuff. Yeah, I'm there with you. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I have to. Yeah, I have oh, to. Absolutely. I have to admit, my very first western was a Clint Eastwood movie, but it was Unforgiven. That was okay, first, that's, uh, that's good stuff. That was the very first Western I saw, and that was like, what, 91, 92 ish? Yeah. Somewhere around there. Well, you're a young 90, guy. 90, yeah. 90, 91, yeah, somewhere, somewhere around there. there. You're a young guy, right? I'm, <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. That's a much different Eastwood than uh, his younger days. I, yeah, I admit it. Mean, but yeah, that was the first one that I've seen. And uh, Did you ever check out anything else? No. Are you still watching uh, the newer stuff? You, I know you're a Clint fan. I, I do I do like his work, um, the especially the movies that he's directed so far. Um, you know, Million Dollar Baby, uh-huh. The Changeling, uh, Gran Torino, so forth and so on. I I think I like him much more as a director than I than I do as an actor. I'm with you on that. Yeah. No, oh, I enjoy him all the way around, but I've got to be honest with you. As well as it did, I never saw Million Dollar Baby. Oh Ooh, man, that's wow. an amazing movie. Wow. That might be my favorite oh. boxing movie ever. Really? Maybe. Mm. 
That's a good movie, yeah, man. That is a good movie. What about Apollo? It just come out what last year? Creed? I loved Creed. Apollo. Creed was great. Creed, 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 was, good. Creed was, was great. Creed was great. Uh, the original Rocky, Raging Bull. I yeah. mean. It's been I mean, boxing good. lends itself to movies like no other sport. It's, yeah, I think like that might be like the best pedigree of a, yeah. of a movie, you know. Yeah, there's something with boxing that just works cinematically. Well, De Niro's got a new one coming out, doesn't he? Oh, um, Hands of Stone. Hands of Stone, Hands yes. Of Stone. Yeah. yeah. And when was that one supposed to come out, you know? That came out uh, last month. Yeah. Oh, it is out. Yeah. yeah. And we missed it. It's about it, was, it was a small release. It's about Roberto Duran. Hands, yes. Hands of Stone. Yes. Group. Yeah. Huh? No moss. Johnny. Yes, sir. Of the uh, Man With No Name trilogy, what was your favorite entry of those? Wow. Pell Rider, maybe? Yep. Man With No Name trilogy. The Oh. The you know Leone what? ones. That's a good question. I'm a weird one. I like I like a For A Few Dollars More is my favorite. I know everybody goes for Good, Bad, and the Ugly. Oh, the Good, Bad, and the Ugly had to be more popular. It's Yeah, it's way more popular. I, I just like something about the score, and I like uh, just, I don't know, I like that story a little bit more. And it's got, it's got Van Cleef and Eastwood together right. still, so you can still get that, but... Why? That, that one's like a weird, I don't know, like we're, I'm, I'm we're, in a weird minority of opinion on that one. That well, it's a weird night. We're a little bit off our game here. We're talking about all other movies except Magnificent Seven, which we need to be talking about. All right. Oh, we're, we're hanging out in the genre. We're hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're in that world. We don't get Westerns. We don't get Westerns. We can get maybe one Western a year, so it's like we can if go that. back and talk about the other ones. Yeah. That. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Did you guys um, like Hateful Eight <laughs> last year? That, no. that was an interesting movie. I, well, I it's classic I, I, Tarantino, but I like the first half of it. First half of it, I mean yeah. the cinematography in that one. I just I like Tarantino's dialogue. I was I was down with the whole thing. So it's it was interesting. They got the um, the big names. They got to play just you know a couple of scenes. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's part of the fun. Like Channing Tatum. There you go. Yeah. That was fun. That that's Tarantino for you. He always pops up these big name actors for like maybe a five minute piece mm-hmm. yeah. in his movie. So it, it reminded me of like a Reservoir Dogs meets The Thing kind of right. with how it was. <laughs> so I was like really on board with it there, and that's it. Reservoir and that Dogs. score by in, uh, Ennio Morricone, who's a great Western scorer. I mean, yeah, he's the best. A lot, and that that score was in my car just on rotation for weeks. You you have movie scores. Mm-hmm. In your car. Yeah, I like listening to okay. movie scores. That is a movie guy right there, brother. I, uh, <laughs> I'm i not going to lie. It's, for me, it's Conan the Barbarian, the original Conan oh, the Barbarian. Oh, I listen to that score all the time. Really? Like, oh, that's if I need to stuff. get myself revved up for, uh, for a day out yep. on the floor. That's a good score. You know? <laughs> that's a good score. <laughs> uh, an obscure one I'm going to put out there, so if people are listening and want to check out, uh, speaking of movie scores, is uh, Sorcerer by Tangerine Dream. <laughs> Uh, it's a William Friedkin movie from 1977 that they scored. It's a remake of Wages of Fear, but it's a great score. Speaking of remakes, I like <laughs> that are. remake better than the original. It's uh, got Roy Scheider. Uh-huh. It's, a, it's a favorite of mine. I, Mitch, I'd love to see it on the big screen. <coughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, it needs to be rediscovered. It, it was the movie he followed up The Exorcist with where he had all this clout. and I, yeah. I find it fascinating when a director gets that clout and they can do whatever they want and no one... They don't have to listen to anybody, and they come back with something. And a lot of times it could be a mess. But this one, I think, was just there. It, 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 the problem was it was released, like, right after Star Wars in 77, so nobody was going to see it. Yeah. And it was called Sorcerer. It has nothing to do with sorcery or anything. It's the name of a, a truck. <laughs> it's about these guys in um, South America or Central America um, hauling nitroglycerin uh, TNT sticks or whatever to put out a fire that's across the way, and they have to drive these big rickety trucks through these terrain to get there. And they're all four guys that are, like, laying low from, like, crime things around the country trying to get money to get out of this hellhole. And they, you know, it's a really tense movie. It's got some great action set pieces. It's just really big kind of movie, but it's, it's amazing. I'm but definitely going to check that out. Check that it out. sounds I really cool. I highly recommend it. I love that movie. We're talking about scores. What about soundtracks? <laughs> all right. Are we talking about the best soundtrack? No, favorite soundtracks. Oh, man. Brandon knows where I'm going. I, I'm going to pick at Brandon here a little bit. All right, I, I, you know what it was one of the best soundtracks of all time, and maybe it's cheesy now. I look back, but Saturday Night Fever, still that was a good one. Bee Gees, yeah, that was a good one. There's so many, like all the classic disco songs you know came from that soundtrack. Like most of them are from there. Um, 
Yeah, if you're a Bee Gees fan, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> just some other ones. Where, where are you going with this? You know where I'm going. Colt Cinema Cavalcade recently oh, killed <laughs> one of my favorite movies from uh, years ago. A beautiful, wonderful piece. I think it won the Academy Award, didn't it? Uh, for, for my close, greatest Johnny. movie ever made. <laughs> <laughs> what is this movie? Rhinestone. No, but it did, make an appearance. it did make appearances at the Razzies, which are held like the night before the Academy Awards. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful soundtrack, I believe. We didn't. We didn't. We did not uh, talk bad about the soundtrack on that episode. No, you did not. Just Mm-mm, just Stallone else. performing <laughs> some of the soundtrack and his wardrobe and his uh, writing skills. Hey, yo, it was sly, you know. We gotta you <laughs> just make the movie. Okay? Yeah, you I ride a horse. You cannot blame me for it. <laughs> yeah, you know. Don't, <laughs> no, sir, I can do the country I was, music. Huh? I was coming mm. off of Rocky, and so you know, I, I had clout. So you, you do a great Rocky. That's not Stallone. Now you did a great Rocky. I can't do Stallone. Yeah, that's right. as close as you're going to get from me. Then. The overemphasized Stallone. Yeah. Mandy looks very happy out here with the Facebook Lives video she's doing. Looks like I'm getting some numbers on it, too. Very cool. My favorite uh, soundtrack is uh, The Highlander. Oh, Queens, It's yeah. a Kind of Magic. Man, that thing is awesome from top to bottom. Remember the animated movie Heavy Metal? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's one of my favorites. That would be a good one for Cult Cinema Cavalcade, right? Heavy Metal? Yeah. Do an anime? Absolutely. Okay, okay. Well, Don't no, laugh I'm because I'm a, like a kid of the 80s. So, like, all the action 80 films, let's say, like, Top Gun and mm-hmm. um, Beverly Hills Cop and one of my favorites, Cobra. Co- <laughs> oh, no. We, 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 Cobra's going to be an episode oh, of our show. Oh, God. Don't worry. I'm a huge Cobra fan. Thank Humongous God. Cobra fan. Great. Which originally, which that script was Beverly Hills Cop. Yes, it was. It was yes, really? And Stallone was was Stallone was, was supposed be, to be Axel Foley, mm-hmm. and he brought that script in, <laughs> and they were like, "Get out of here with this!" And yeah. so he said, "Okay, now go make Cobra, where I yeah. cut pizza with scissors." Exactly. <laughs> I have a I have a terribly embarrassing story about Cobra. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. No, no, man. no, no, no. I There's hear nothing this. terribly <laughs> embarrassing about Cobra. <laughs> All right. So C- Cobra came out when I was I want to say nine years old. All right, and. Uh, this friend of my family took me to see it, and uh, Jackie Chan's first American movie with, like, uh, Danny Aiello or something like that. Anyway, I was way too young to be seeing Cobra, and it shows that scene in the beginning where everybody's slamming the axes oh, and stuff yeah, together. Yeah, the serial killer, yeah. It scared <laughs> the crud out of me. I started <laughs> crying and freaking out like they were getting ready to kick us out of the... Because I'm, like, sobbing. I don't really know the guy I'm with. He's, like, you know, he's just, like, a He might of be mine. clanging those after the movie. Dude, they <laughs> drug me out of the theater. I'm like, no, they're going to get me! <laughs> oh, man. I, still, I still have not seen the movie. Really? <laughs> no, I'm not afraid of it anymore. Not, it's awesome. You know, it's, it's not terrible. It's a, it's a, it's a great movie. It's like movie. Stallone's it's take game. on Dirty Harry. Yeah. And just, it's, that, it's, yeah, it's great. That's that. That's a Sylvester Stallone movie. I mean, all right. Do you remember Brigitte, Brigitte Nielsen too? It's one yeah. of the one of the yeah. movies they did oh, together. Is it? Yeah, she okay. plays a, a, the model he has yeah. to protect. That's from when the they were first getting gang. started. That was. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you remember the great uh, line at the beginning of it, when the, uh, the, the you're criminals, the disease, I'm the cure. No, even better than that, when he goes in a grocery store, they're robbing a grocery store, mm-hmm. and they supposedly have a bomb, and they tell him to get back or they'll blow the grocery store up. He says, go ahead. I don't shop here. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, then, and then I like how he's sitting there like he's scouting out where all the guys are in the building, and he grabs a Coors, and he opens it up and drinks it while he's <laughs> trying to go in there and, like, save these people. Didn't he always use, like, a match as a, like, yeah, a yeah, toothpick? Matches yeah, matches yeah. Like, everything. He's, like, overly trying to badass himself. And nice. Even the car. In the car. In the car, yeah. That was a good thing. The Cobra Mobile. <laughs> and his, no, his name was Marion Cobretti, Cobretti, too. It was so good. Come on. <laughs> The only thing, like, was it uh, the guy who had the best, like, action guy name was uh, Seagal in Hard to Kill was Mason Storm. That's a great name. I mean, come oh. on. that's It's like someone could have that name, but probably not. But just, oh, yeah. <laughs> Hamilton 69 Max is where we are. Movie night with JL Media. We're talking about a lot of different movies tonight. But we are here for the Magnificent Seven, Denzel's new masterpiece. That's what we're going to do tonight, right? Yeah. 
But, you know, you say we got off topic, but we're also talking about magnificent things like right. Habitat for Humanity. We're talking about Cobra. We're talking about Mitch's screenplay. I mean, those are all magnificent Talk about things. Mitch crying at Cobra. Mm -hmm. yep. No, I think we're going to be talking about that a lot over next year. So. <laughs> all magnificent things. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I'm going to go buy <laughs> aviator glasses. I'll be macho again. That's cool. <laughs> I, mean, I did it, guys. On. I watched Cobra. With your leather jacket, you know, just. <laughs> I, I followed it with. I, 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 Bomber. I, I uh, watched Cobra and then immediately put follow that bird in before I went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I only wept bitterly three times. <laughs> that is beautiful. Jason, are we losing you over there, brother? He, I, he's looking at us and shaking his head like, what have I gotten myself into? I am amazed of the movie knowledge right here at this table tonight. This oh, is great. This is, this is awesome. Just one of the many things we do with JM. I know I've got my weekend today. plans. I'm taking notes on <laughs> Cobra, and, and I know what I'm doing this weekend, catching up. <laughs> they do some great throwback movies here. Uh, do you know what's coming up the, the month after next? Have we got that schedule yet? I know we've I, got I North by Northwest next month. Well, we've got Psycho, the, Halloween. Yeah, Psycho, Halloween, uh, Batman, the 1989 Batman, which... Ooh. Um, we're doing uh, something we're doing that's really cool that's not a part of our flashback cinema is we're doing um, the original Batman movie. 66? 66. 66. Yeah, oh, wow. Stuff, yeah. uh, sometimes you just can't get rid of a bomb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't really know. I do, like that one. It's do we know when we're doing that one? Man. I'm sorry. I'm I'm embarrassed. Embarrassed. I keep telling myself. You've like, got too much going Mitch, on. Take five, doing it. Take doing five it, minutes Johnny. and be prepared for this show. One time. <laughs> <laughs> take five minutes. Let's see. I'll, I'm going to pull up the uh, the flashback series here. and I'll get, I You, get go right ahead. I you know, while he's looking that up, I have to honestly say, I have a nine-year-old uh, daughter who is actually here with me today. And uh, just She's recently. She's adorable. Oh, thank you, Savannah. That's my baby. But anyway, we just recently watched the uh, Bat Batman the movie, 1966 version. Mm -hmm. And she loved it. She, really? She absolutely loved the movie. Oh, very cool. And she did love Batman v Superman, too, Johnny. <laughs> did you see, did you see, Brandon, did you see the new tattoo he got after the movie? Uh-uh. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Is it Batman symbol? Yeah, yeah but it's Batman. Yeah, it's Batman. Look at it. Yeah. That's Superman awesome. inside that Batman tattoo, isn't it? No. Okay. That's oh, a Joker. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Superman. <laughs> I might, I, get a, I might get a Superman tattoo next, Johnny. Just that's to, what you told me. That's to what I'm trying you. to get you to, yeah. next to year. admit on the air. Next year. I, I, I'm saying it right here. Book it. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, I believe the Flashback series are on Tuesdays. Is that right, Mitch? It's uh, Sundays and Wednesdays at 2 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, and 7 p.m. I can't edit live. We have several <laughs> listeners here. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I mispronounced Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the last one I saw here was uh, Jaws, the original. Oh man, and I, that was phenomenal. I watched that movie so much. Yeah, I, I yeah, me too. Perfection, so good. But I'm in here a lot. Mitch can attest to this. I come in and, and make him come out and hug my neck. He's always back there working. It's always good to have you here, sir. There we are. We enjoy your company. I I'm appreciate not having it. any luck right now. My phone is uh, acting a little wonky. But uh, you know, next week I swear. I will come prepared. <laughs> we went the first quarter schedule of uh, 2017. <laughs> yes, sir. Just the flashback. You got a flashback series going on too, but you've got morning movies here, don't you? Yeah, I mean, this week we've got a uh, Ratchet and Clank based on the popular video game. That's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 10 a.m. Um, and the, we we have uh, two or three series of these movies per year. Um, in the summertime, we do them on weekdays. Um, and in the spring and the fall, we do them on weekends. So um, we've got lots of activities um, scheduled. Um, we have people come out, and we did some face painting one week. And, um, you know, if you go to our website, goodrichqualitytheaters.com, or our Facebook page, you can see the full schedule. Uh, but I highly recommend it. If you have an FMG card or a loyalty program, it's free. Um, otherwise, I think tickets are a dollar. Uh, it's a great value, and, uh, you know, we hope everybody brings the kids out and has a good time. Okay, is there anything you do on Tuesday? Because Tuesday's sticking out in my head for some Tuesdays reason. Tuesdays are our bargain day. All Maybe tickets, that, all tickets are seven dollars. That's me. That's what it was. Everything, it was everything someday. except IMAX and GDX is seven dollars all day, um, except for our Twilight 
Twilight is still 675. Our bargain Twilight shows between 4 and 6 p.m. Still That's showing cool. that movie? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I know. The Paul Newman one, though, right? The Paul Newman. Exactly. Well, normally when you have the IMAX here, do you also <laughs> offer the standard movie? Uh, we have been doing that. Uh, we did that with um, Batman and Superman. Um, we're, we're, we're trying to make sure we offer a 2D offering. Now, some of that's not up to us. Some of that is right. the studio. They don't always make a 2D offering for IMAX. But um, we're, we're trying to offer at least one show a day or two shows a day in the matinee especially that are available for um, that audience that only wants 2D. And, and you know, it actually works out really well because that audience is, you know, um, a little bit on the older side usually. Um, and they like matinees. Sure. So it, it wor it's worked out really well. I've got to get in a matinee and be at MCL by 3.34 o'clock in bed before dark. <laughs> After Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy, right? Yeah. Right. No, <laughs> Golden Girls. Golden Girls. <laughs> Take your pills. Uh, yeah. Nurse leaves you alone. Drink your prune juice and you're good to go. Yeah. Hamilton 69 Max is where <laughs> we're doing it live. Movie night with JL Media. Normally once a month up here, but we're scheduling a little bit more. We're going to be back next week for Deep Water Horizon, a true story. Uh, we'll see how true it is on film. Things are going to uh, get real on movie night, huh? Absolutely. Absolutely. Quick shout out to my buddy Larry Garrett of Garrett Professional Cleaning Service. Check this dude out. Any parting words from Hamilton 69 Max and Mr. Mitchell Ross? Well, we love having you guys. I'm looking forward to having you back next week. Um, really looking forward to the uh, November and December frame. We might want to look at you know, if you want to, Johnny, throw in a couple extra in there. We got Doctor Strange. Absolutely, please. We've got the uh, the Harry the continuation of the Harry Potter franchise. We've got Star Wars. I mean, we've we've got a lot of great flicks in there, and um, you know, the more the merrier. You know what I mean? No, we're going to add some more this year, and uh, it's going to be a good year. We're going to finish it out strong, my brother. All right, Hamilton Thank you 69 so much. Max, the website. Give us to us one more time. That's uh, GoodrichQualityTheaters.com. Mr. David Banks. Yes, sir. Of Indie Drinking Dead and Headline News fame. That's it. Check us out. Headline News, N U Z. N U Z. Thank you, Myself Major. and Angie Breyer. Angie Breyer. How's she doing, man? Oh, she's doing great. We got to get some more episodes down. I think, oh, I, I, think I got two banked right now, so we got to get back in there. Yeah, we got a, I got a bunch of ideas going on in this head of mine. So, oh, yeah. Lord. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting. Mr. Brandon Peters of Cult Cinema Cavalcade and so much more. Mm hmm. Thank you. For the website there. Uh, CultCinemaCavalcade.com, but you can also find us on iTunes. Can you give us a sneak peek of the next episode yeah, you guys have? Yeah, uh, on Monday we're doing Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night Part 2. Uh, <laughs> yes. 1987. And our guest on that is a guy named Justin Beam. And you might go, well, who's that guy? But you may have uh, read stuff like he was uh, once a writer for Fangoria magazine. I he's, love Fangoria. He's currently up. working on a, uh, a writer for like a Kiss magazine. And then he's also done, uh, produced uh, like special features for a lot of classic horror movie Blu rays, uh -huh. including like Sleepaway Camp, um, John Carpenter's Body Bags, uh, mm. John Carpenter's, um, oh gosh, what was Donald Pleasance was in it. Um, Sleep in, um, um, Prince of Darkness and oh, yes. um, Sleepaway Camp. Like he's, I mean, he's, he's done a couple of Halloween. He used to work for the people who produce the Halloween movies, Trankus Films. Um, wow. But he's he's got his name everywhere. Real hard work to do. He's got a new podcast called the Justin Beam Radio Hour, and um, really fortunate to have him on. It's exciting. He picked the movie, and we're happy to talk about it with him. You, I just had a mental block here. I was looking at his kids over here. The uh, movie you just named with Donald Pleasance. Uh, um, Prince of Darkness. Where is my head these days, Miss Mandy? Prince of Darkness. Alice Cooper was also in that. Yeah, movie. he's in that movie. And Justin, actually, mm -hmm. he's uh, interviewed Alice Cooper and stuff before and has a relationship with uh, with him. So, like, you know, he can do in interviews and things like that. But Brother, thanks for sitting in again. Oh, always, Johnny. Anytime you need me. Habitat for Humanity of Hamilton County. Mr. Yes, Jason. Yes, sir. Thank you for yes, joining sir. us, brother. Uh, thank you for so, much, so much for having me. We really... Uh, Appreciate it, and I've enjoyed this. I've any, enjoyed this. Any parting words from Habitat for Humanity, Hamilton well, County? Sure. So I keep getting to Hamilton County in there. Mandy made sure good I job. said that. I'm very proud of good, you. Very good, very good, yes. Uh, well, I'd like to give everybody our website. It's www.habitathamiltoncounty.org. Um, and like I said, we come see us at our ReStore. Um, 
I think kind of goodwill meets Lowe's. We have a lot of new, gently used building materials, furniture, those kind of things. And this stuff is, is stuff that's donated to you? All this stuff is donated to us. Um, actually, if you clean it out your garage or basement, give us a call. Uh, we come pick it up. Or a um, cultural marble warehouse. Ac- that's absolutely. Actually, we got a couple of trucks. We'll bring it to you. So Terrific. We'll take that as well. So do you sell that to the public as well as you It's it? open to the public. We just have our new space right at um, 69 and 96 at the Cross Point Business Park. Absolutely. No, right where it is, certainly. And uh, 7998 Center Point Drive, Suite 100. Uh, 16,000 square feet of uh, furniture. That a whole lot of hay. I'm so excited about that. 16,000 feet. That a whole lot of hay. I have been to a restore, and it is so cool. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. We've done a lot of work with our house with those restores. They're awesome. So if you're you're fixing up your house, you're looking for furniture, or maybe you're just, uh, you've been on Pinterest uh, for a while and looking for a project to do, and uh, we have it. I need to come up there. I just moved myself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I just moved like two weeks ago. So yeah. I, I make sure to walk through at least once a day to see what's coming in. And it, it is amazing, some of the items that we've gotten donated and some really great stuff. And it benefits a great cause. So uh, all the proceeds stay here in Hamilton County and, and serve uh, our mission of uh, serving families with housing. Wow, wonderful. Wonderful. Miss Mandy. Here I am. Next week, Deepwater Horizon. I can't wait. I, I guess love Mark sh- Wahlberg. I guess we should end this one first, though. Magnificent Seven. Go check it out. Hamilton 16 IMAX. We will be doing it this evening. Check it out. Next week, though, Deepwater Horizon. Yes. We will be back. 7 o'clock. We're going live from the lobby. I was going to give you the I'm final ready. word. Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> <laughs> let's just let's just have a moment of silence oh, no, for him, man. Let's have a J- J- JLM does before D- we DWH. End, <laughs> before we end, I have to ask Manny this. Uh-oh. Mark Wahlberg or Ben Affleck? Because you're Mark. going you're going gaga over Mark Wahlberg right Mark now. Mark Wahlberg. All right. Hands or, down. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. They're both they're both from Boston. I hope so. her fi- fiance knows this. Okay. All right. He does. He's okay. fine with it. Until next week, this has been Movie Night with JL Media.